Welcome back to The Art of Natural Beauty, episode number 17. Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Natural Beauty. It's great to be back with you all this week again. I always enjoy the interaction that we have here between us on YouTube, and uh, I certainly hope that you guys enjoy the time that we spend together as well. Uh, today I want to talk about a topic uh, that is an experience that maybe some of you have had as well, and uh, it's kind of centered around a blog post that I wrote on my website back in uh, April 20th of 2017. And that post was titled Mistakes, Discovery, and Zen. And it's really uh, centered around an image that was taken uh, back in September 30th of 2013. And it's one of the first images that uh, I took on 4x5 sheet film that I was actually happy with and thought of a uh, good enough quality to include into my portfolio. So it is one of the two first images that I really began building uh, my new style and, um, and really one of the first products of my large format uh, adventure. And uh, it's a image that I titled Journey and you can find it on uh, my website under uh, the Western UP category. Um, it's an image that was taken at the Presque Isle River in the Porcupine Mountains. And uh, it's kind of an intimate uh, close-up image of a water cascade along the Presque Isle River. And uh, it's reminiscent of the area. Uh, that, that area is a quite unique landscape as a lot of the uh, Lake Superior shoreline is. Um, the, the water has kind of eroded away the sandstone in that area and created kind of some cool ripple effects on the, on the stone and some neat little pockets and, and such uh, throughout the river. So um, during this time frame, I was still very young uh, in my experience with large format photography. And I found this scene uh, on the Presque Isle River and really liked it and set up the 4x5. And uh, I made a couple exposures uh, of, of this image on September 30th. Um, and I wasn't quite sure about the outcome. Uh, this was, uh, again, one of the first images that I, that I had taken on 4x5. And... I, when I walked away from this experience at the end of the day, uh, a lot of doubt had set in. And I, I was also doing a video journal at the time. So um, you, I'm going to include some of those excerpts from the footage from that trip uh, here in a minute. So you can kind of judge, you know, what I was thinking, my thoughts at the time. But there was a lot of doubt uh, surrounding this image after the fact. Doubt had kind of set in. I... I didn't feel that I had calculated for reciprocity failure correctly, and I was kind of upset that this image that I was really hoping was going to turn out uh, probably wasn't going to turn out. So let's cut over to that footage right now and have a look. So I made a couple mistakes yesterday, um, and I, not I noticed it right away as I made my log of the shoot and wrote it down in my notebook. Uh, the first exposure was on Fu Fuji Velvia 50, f64, 120 millimeter lens, um, and I had a circular polarizer in to cut the reflection so you could see through the water, the rushing water, uh, to the rock surface below. And um, I made a mistake. I my exposure was about 53 seconds, just under a minute. And um, I forgot to calculate for reciprocity failure. So it may come out, it may not. Um, it probably won't be optimum. I then set up for a second exposure on Kodak Ektar 100. And 
did the same thing in my haste of trying to hurry and uh, get the image in the can. I forgot to calculate for reciprocity failure. Uh, I then realized what I had done after taking those two exposures that I did not calculate for reciprocity. And so I proceeded to set up with another shot on Velvia 50 and calculate reciprocity failure into it. Uh, the trouble is when I did that, when I took my light meter readings, I then forgot to set my meter back up to ASA 50 instead of 100, which of course didn't give me a long enough exposure once again. Uh, I then set up for a second shot on Kodak Ektar 100, being the fourth exposure taken that day, and forgot to calculate for the circular polarizer. So I was batting a thousand yesterday. Uh, something might come out, it may not. I don't know. We won't know until we get it back and get it developed, but um, one thing is for certain, I, I, I guess I did get uh, get that out of my system, get the anxiousness out of my system and realize that, you know, the elements are at play and, and uh, you get a shot, you get a shot. If you don't, you don't. That's what photography is all about. But when it does come out good, uh, all that hard work and effort pay off. So as you can see from that footage, um, a lot of doubts, a lot of frustration. Um, wasn't really sure that that image was going to turn out. And in fact, I went back uh, the following day and made a couple more exposures uh, to hopefully compensate for my mistakes uh, that I, I thought I made on the, the day prior. And um, what we're going to do now is we'll have a look at the outcome of that image, which again is Journey. Um, it turned out very well. Um, again, it's one of the images I'm, I'm very proud of. Um, it still holds true today. Um, you know, taken back in 2013, we're in 2018 now. But it's, it's definitely an image I'm, I'm extremely proud of. It's still in the portfolio. And uh, I, I feel that it's going to be a, uh, an image that's going to remain in my portfolio throughout the rest of my career. So... I guess the lesson that, uh, of, this, of this image is um, sometimes we feel that we're making mistakes um, out there in the field. Sometimes doubt and frustration can set in. Uh, with film photography, you really don't know until you get it back from the lab and you look at it and on the light table and uh, maybe you scan it and, and you uh, kind of play around with um, trying to cr create, you know, make that image uh render the way that you had perceived it when you captured the image. Uh, when we start out in photography, you know, a lot of times we're out just looking for cool compositions and, uh, and, and neat things that capture our eye within the landscape. And we go through the steps, the technical steps and the creative steps to set up and make an exposure. Um, but we don't always have the foresight all the way through from capture to post-processing or, or the, Im the I image editing stage to know exactly how it's going to come out uh, in the end. So, you know, when we're still developing, we're trying to tie all those components together, the visualization, the capture process, the post-processing, and then the printing stage. Uh, but as we uh, mature, and um, really come into our own and find our style and learn to trust ourselves as photographers, all those components kind of are part of this, they, they are a part of the same process. So when you find a composition, you look at it, you get an image in your head, an idea in your head of how you want that image to render. And that's going, you're going to look through the, the compositional stage, through the capture stage, and the post-production stage all in that one instance and know exactly how you're going to render that image so when you're working on it post and in the printing process how it's going to render as a final image. So this, this um, little instance occurred before I was really able to see all the way through the process at, as one as one complete process and step and I 
wasn't trusting of myself. I let some doubt and frustration take hold and I didn't have faith in it. And when I got the film back and, and actually had a look at it, I was extremely pleased and relieved that, that this image journey uh, on the first take rendered far better than it did even on my second attempt to go back and do everything correctly technically that I thought that um, I, I messed up the day before. So I wouldn't say that this is a, a serendipitous occurrence. It wasn't uh, the development of events uh, that just seemed to happen uh, that that had a happy or beneficial outcome. It was... Um, it was more of a deliberate attempt to try to make an exposure and a composition that would turn out the way that it ended up turning out. But I had doubt uh, in the process that I'd made a mistake and that it wasn't going to turn out. So that kind of clouded me for the next two days, uh, really hung over my head. And that kind of thinking can really uh, get in the way of the creative process. I guess the moral here is that we don't want to allow that doubt and frustration to taint us. Um, perhaps we did make a mistake. Perhaps uh, an image won't turn out the way that we uh, hoped that it would. We don't really know until we get the film back and take a look at it. We need to try to trust in ourselves and our abilities um, to create great images and you know, hope that it's going to come out the way that uh, that we thought it would. Um, so let's take a look at another, another example. This is um, a more recent example uh, that occurred on my recent trip uh, of October uh, 2017 to uh, the Keweenaw Peninsula in Copper Harbor. So um, a lot of you have probably seen that uh, X-Venture series, the Keweenaw X-Venture series. This uh, image was captured on October 18th, 2017 in the Keweenaw. And um, we'll take a look at an excerpt from that footage here in a minute. But uh, this was another instance where I didn't feel the composition was coming together the way that I wanted it to. It uh, wasn't so much a technicality of something that I had done in the exposure process. It more pertained to uh, the lensing that I had available to me at the time and allowing for enough space in the image um, and finding the proper the, the proper place to set my tripod so I could get the image that I was envisioning. Uh, so I had some doubts uh, the way that this image was going to turn out. Um, and uh, so let's take a look at that footage right now and kind of get inside my head and see what I was thinking at the time. I've got the shot set up and now it's about 6.10. I wasn't able to get the composition quite the way I was hoping to. So I tried the 43 mil at first and it was extremely too wide. I was even getting some of the shoreline and that wasn't the look I was going for. And uh, so then I put on the 80 and the 80 was just really not wide enough. So I backed up and I tried a couple different vantage points and I still wasn't really able to get the composition the way I wanted it to be. But I, I ended up settling on the 80. So what I've done is I've framed up this group of rocks here. I've got it actually so the camera is tilted a little bit up and I'm getting more of the sky and less of the water and the rocks. The rocks and the water are kind of in the bottom quarter of the image. And initially I was hoping to catch a lot of cloud movement because a couple hours ago, there was a bit more of a contrast between the clouds in the sky and the blueness of the sky. And right now that kind of typical haze is set in for the day. There is still some clouds out there, but that haze is uh, set in. And I was kind of hoping to, you know, put on my uh, my three-stop full ND grad filter and slow down those cloud that cloud movement, so I had a really dramatic cloud movement going on. I'm not sure we're going to really see any of that because the clouds are not moving. They're they're a very high wispy cloud, uh, so that may not work out. So I'm kind of parked out right now. The camera set up right here behind me. And uh, not really ecstatic about uh, the way this composition's come together. 
you know, it is what it is. You, you try and you, you know, you, you try your best to make something work out. Sometimes it doesn't work out. And then sometimes you think it's not gonna turn out and it actually ends up being one of your favorite images. And that's just the way things go. So I'm gonna stick this one out here and uh, try to make a couple exposures here as the sun kind of dips down and we get that uh, earth shadow show up and kind of that purpley sky. And it'll end up being a longer exposure. So I may end up taking out the uh, Firecrest ND filter, which is this front one here. But um, I don't know, we'll find out. We'll see how it ends up looking. So we'll check back in with you in a little while. So as we see here in this footage, uh, again, you know, a little bit of doubt, a little bit of frustration, um, but also a little bit more, um, a little bit more knowledge um, was present at the time because I've been through this before. Um, I was kind of feeling that it wasn't going to work. There was a little bit of frustration, but I liked what I was seeing uh, on the landscape. I liked the way that the light was rendering. Um, I, I liked the composition. It just, I, I was worried that I, was, I wasn't going to allow enough room, enough breathing space for my subject, which were all the rocks there in that little, uh, that little bay in Lake Superior, to have enough room to flow and to give enough space, negative space in the image for that subject matter and that positive, uh, positive subject matter space to breathe and have its room. When I got the film back, I did a review on that film, and uh, that, that review is also posted here on YouTube. Uh, I was quite pleased with the outcome, quite pleased and a little surprised that uh, there was a little bit more room in the framing than I was actually seeing through my viewfinder itself. So that's something that I kind of learned about that 80 millimeter lens is that there's a little bit more breathing room than is apparent there uh, in, in the guides line. And it's something that going forward, I'm going to know that that I do have a little bit of compensation, a little bit of room for um, for that lens when I use it in the future. So I titled this image Serendipity, ironically enough, although again, it wasn't quite a, a serendipitous occurrence. It wasn't just this occurrence that happened to happen, uh, developed uh, events that developed and came together. Um, it was a carefully uh, composed and thought of an executed shot, I just didn't think I had the space. But I like the term serendipity. I thought it was kind of a neat name to tag along to this image and um, somewhat fitting because it was a happy and beneficial outcome uh, in the end. Uh, so uh, one more image I kind of like to talk about that's in this category. And again, this happened on the same trip. And in fact, it was the day after uh, I captured Serendipity. So this was October 19th, 2017. And this was uh, uh, one of the shots that I took when I made the trip to Bond Falls early in that morning on the 19th. Uh, Bond Falls is in Paulding, Michigan. And I went back there really to kind of scout the, scout the scene, scout the area. I had a feeling that um, most of the leaves, the fall leaves had fallen already. There wasn't going to be a lot of color left on the trees. Um, but I wanted to get back to that region because it's been a little while since I was there. And I set up that morning. And um, as I expected, it was kind of blase in terms of color. Pretty much most of the leaves had fallen. Um, the light wasn't amazing. Um, it was kind of coming up out of the, uh, out of the southeast uh, somewhat to the uh, top uh, right frame of this photograph. Um, and I generally don't shoot into, into the sun or into my, my key light, but I, I liked the composition. I was in a way trying to just walk away with more images to add to the gallery. Not really, not really the best practice to do just to go out and expose film for the, uh, just, just for the sake of exposing film. But I, I trusted in my ability to make a composition that I thought pleasing and, and that seemed to work well. I, I, I liked the tonal differences between the rock uh, on the shoreline and the, the bright cascade, uh, the, the brighter tones in, in, the, in the cascade of the falls. So I made a couple exposures. Uh, you'll see in the film review, 
and in, even in, in this little clip I'm going to play here in a second, that I didn't really feel like I was going to walk away with anything that day, um, substantial, anything that I was going to add to the gallery. And I and again, I, I felt like I was kind of going through the motions. But um, when I got the film back, a little bit different story. So let's take a look at one of those excerpts right now. To be honest, uh, this morning I haven't really fallen in love with any of the compositions that I found or made. Those images that I made earlier, I kind of feel like I just made them for the sake of making some more images to make sure I walked away with something. Sometimes on these trips you'll go out and you'll only walk away with one or two good photographs and that's fine. I'm not in the business of producing uh, quantity of images. I'm more in the business of producing quality images and I've kind of not really found my center on this trip yet. I think that there may be one or two images that I've made that, that will hopefully turn out pretty good. I won't know until I see them. I'm still really emotionally attached to the ideas of those images. So as you can see from that video clip, wasn't really expecting much out of it. Um, again, I felt like I was kind of going through the motions and just trying to make some exposures. Um, you know, you throw enough you throw enough darts at the wall and see see what sticks and 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 not and not not the best practice. It's kind of like uh, loading a bunch of salt in a shotgun and firing it and and you know seeing seeing what kind of damage you can you, you can wreak with with that. Just spreading you know rapidly firing away and and hoping you hit the target. Um, and in this case. Actually, when I walked away and looked at the film from that shoot in the morning, there were two images that I was happy with. And one of them ended up being uh, this image here, which I titled Rush, kind of because of the rushing water flowing over the cascade. But uh, also, I guess as a play in words, that I was somewhat just rushing myself out to photograph the scene that morning, not really feeling strongly about the compositions that I was making that day. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out. Um, so I guess the moral of the story is here is uh, sometimes we need to trust ourselves and have faith and not let doubt take hold. And that was kind of the moral of Mistakes, Discovery, and Zen, that, that blog post on my website from April 20th. Sometimes we're out there and we're really excited to come home with something and we either make a mistake that we think is a technical mistake or we just aren't quite feeling that the compositions are coming together and we're just maybe making exposures for the sake of making exposures uh, to say we did something to feel productive. And it's not really a good mindset to get into because, um, you know, again, frustration and doubt will cloud us and will kind of take away from our ability to be open to whatever is presented to us uh, and, and work in that situation, uh, work in the environment, work in the uh, conditions that are in front of us and, and try to capture that in the best way that we can through you know either form and composition or tone in form and create some some amazing photographs that uh, are reflected on our style and convey our unique vision and way of seeing the world and creating a artistic piece that renders that feeling that we felt when we were at that location we don't want that feeling that we felt well capturing that image to reflect frustration and doubt. Uh, I don't think that that is um, something we're all striving to convey in in our artwork. Um, but it may be, it may be, depending on what we're doing. But um, I guess what we need to do is we need to rely on our ability to create our unique artistic expressions uh, in, in the elements and, um, and the atmosphere that is around us at the time. Um, it's not always going to be optimal. It's not always going to be what we're expecting uh, in, our, in our mind when we get to a location. 
And in fact, a lot of frustration um, is stemming from uh, set expectations. If we set expectations of others, ourselves, or the way a landscape may be rendered uh, in our photographs, uh, we're setting ourselves up for disappointment. If we don't set expectations and we allow ourselves and our heart to be open to situations, to people, to the landscape, to the light, to the atmosphere that's present at the time, then we're giving ourselves free creative license to take what we have and create and express our feelings and thoughts and emotions at the time based on what is true. And that is the Zen factor of mistakes, discovery, and Zen. So take that knowledge with you next time you're out there making an exposure and you feel that perhaps you've made a technical mistake or the composition doesn't seem to be coming together. It's not meeting your expectations at the time. And reflect on it, but don't allow the uh, frustration and uh, doubt to set in and take hold. Keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. Um, perhaps it won't turn out the way you would like it to or the way you're visualizing it to turn out in the end. Uh, but don't let those negative aspects uh, find root in, in your heart and in the artwork that you're trying to create. Allow it to be what it is. Um, and if it ends up being a mistake or a failure, realize that it actually isn't a failure. It's a opportunity to learn from that experience. So that's about all I have to share with you guys today. Um, I hope you can take this little bit of advice with you uh, into the field and just always remember to keep an open heart and to always trust yourself and, uh, and, and, and trust that you have the ability to take what's there and elaborate on that and create something uh, that reflects you personally as an artist. So until next time, enjoy the art of natural beauty.